Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your daily crypto news. Hope that you're all doing well and that you're all having an incredible day. As always, likes, subscriptions, and comments? Yeah, that's the third one. Are always very much appreciated. A very big thank you to all my Patreon supporters and everyone out there who is a clicker of affiliate links. I am currently in the future uh, away. So I am, uh, this is going to be another edition of News I Missed. Don't worry, I'm not away for like 15 days like I've been before. It's only just a, a one day thing. So tomorrow the news will be back to n normal air quotes. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump right into it. The New York State Assembly is set to vote on a proposed ban on cryptocurrency mining in New York State next week, which the bill, which was approved by the lower house in March, faces widespread criticism in the crypto community. This is slightly news I missed, but also still going on right now. The proposed bill, number A7389C, has seen massive backlash from several unions and communities in New York, including independent power producers of New York, the Blockchain Association, and other crypto lobbyists. The proposed bill seeks to establish a moratorium on cryptocurrency mining operations that use proof-of-work authentication methods such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. The main issue brought up by the bill is that the economic impact of energy-intensive crypto mining Voting on the bill will begin during an assembly session on the 25th of April. I just saw something online, if I am not mistaken. This is why I said, like, you know, it's news I missed, but it's also currently going on right now. I believe, as far as I read on Twitter, that a lot of the bill has been kind of pushed through. I think there's meant to be another vote or something like that in, in, in May or June. I don't know the exact timeline for it. Um, if you have noticed, there is a, a really weird bit of backlash against anything that's uh, proof, of, proof of work mining at the moment, and it mainly focuses around the idea of Bitcoin. I explained this to you many other times before. Uh, these ripples, once again, uh, that Elon Musk, ha and, and it's him, don't, don't tell me that it's not him, uh, started in 2020 with the idea that Bitcoin is dirty. Bitcoin is so-and-so, the idea that he's mentioned before that Dogecoin would get his full approval if it moved over to proof of stake as well. The idea of him trying to uh, announce that he's mining uh, Bitcoin in Tesla factories and they will be doing it with 100% green mining has gotten everybody kind of up in arms, if you will, over the idea of mining Bitcoin specifically. There, there aren't many other discussions of other proof of work coins being mined and how dirty or terrible that they are. The idea of energy consumption as well, which we also went over last week. If you missed those videos, try and find them. I don't remember exactly which video it was in. Uh, it was the, the idea that in 2017, there were articles saying that by 2020, Bitcoin would be using up all of the electricity on the planet. Not some of it, literally all of it. Uh, and basically, it would be a, a gigantic problem. So we're still seeing the the remnants of this idea that were rehashed once again uh, back in 2020 by Muskie before he actually uh, threw a lot of his support behind Dogecoin. Is this going to happen? Who knows? Uh, why are people still doing business in New York? I also don't know. Uh, there were a lot of articles discussing this this one says the new china a lot of you know you know you know reel it in there buddy a lot of people are very upset about this happening i think that it's because regardless of how many times the old system has smacked us in the face a lot of people continue to run back to it new york as the international capital of money we've looked over it before they have an extremely high tax rate people who i know who live in new york have told me even if you own an apartment, if you own a flat, uh, the actual land fees for actually owning said place per month are like $800, $1,100. Why would you want to live in such an expensive place? Why would you want to deal in cryptocurrencies or trade in cryptocurrencies or cash out of cryptocurrencies or have a cryptocurrency business when you have such high taxes, especially when you have much warmer other places around the world that you could legally go to and have a 0% tax rate when you decide to finally cash out. I don't understand it. Um, I understand the frustration completely, wholeheartedly. 
because people just kind of want to be where they are to be able to do certain operations. Maybe they feel that New York is the place for it, but it's clearly not. We've had this conversation so many other times before. The idea of of the bit license and companies having to wait six years to be able to receive approval, to be able to trade or custody or whatever cryptocurrencies, it's garbage. And and even this article, this one that's on the screen, I mean, this guy completely uh, goes off and a lot of people are complaining about the mayor and all these other things. And it's like, this is why I said before, not every city, country, or continent is really going to make it. It's going to be the countries with open arms who say, we have a 0% tax, even a 5 or or 10% tax on crypto. Do what you want in the country, you know, yada, yada. And, you know, this, this level of relative freedom uh, for cryptocurrency mining, as long as you let the, the, the government know what you're doing, they're usually fine with it, but... I still don't get the appeal of many things in, in, in the traditional financial world or even the, the idea that people continuously hang on to, I have to do business in London. I have to be in New York. I've got to be in LA for this. It's like, this isn't the 1920s anymore. You can do things online. Like these business and operations can run in other parts of the world with you sitting in a cafe somewhere in Dubai and you'll still be able to do the things that you want to do. So uh, we'll see. Sometime next week, if the vote has continued to go through, whatever's supposed to be happening sometime in May and all the other things. But a lot of people are very upset at this. And and, and to all of them, I, I say, why? You knew this place was garbage before. Were you expecting to polish a turd? Probably not. I have a, I, hello, people who... I, I, I doubt any of them are, are, are watching or listening. But people who I know in New York, I hear bad things all the time. It's It's not a... You know, anyway, so that's the New York state might apparently be proposing a ban on basically Bitcoin mining. Let's see if it goes through. Who knows? Let's move on. Next up, sneaker and apparel giant Nike made a significant play towards the metaverse in December. When it acquired Artifact Studios, that is R-T-F-K-T, a firm known for original digital sneakers sold as NFTs. Today, the alliance bore its first fruit as Artifact revealed Nike's first Ethereum NFT sneakers. The Artifact X Nike Dunk Genesis Crypto Kicks, wow, are digital wearable items that are apparently designed for use in metaverse worlds. I think they're also supposed to be for AR, i.e., You put those metaverse glasses on, you walk down the street, you can look at your feet or anybody else's feet who has one of the sneakers on, and you'll see that they're also wearing it. Artifact revealed today initially via a teaser video on Twitter, which shows how the look of these digital shoes can be altered via collectible skin vials, which can be swapped to enable varying styles. A lot of the uh, NFT projects have begun to kind of spread their wings, and I think a lot of them are, I I, I don't know, how how do I say this? Uh, we're, we're seeing general usability for the metaverse begin to kind of appear. I'm still, I'm still somewhere near this, uh, June timeframe continuously where I personally think things are kind of, kind of, uh, set off, go up moon, rocket ship, all those kind of things. Because everyone's beginning to launch and have these things uh, come to fruition around this time. And it is kind of cool. I've, For those of you who haven't known before, I am into a lot of NFT projects. And I'm starting to sit there and think of exactly which ones I should be accumulating or which pieces of digital land I should be accumulating. Because I think a lot of these are going to be around for a very long time. For those of you who've never seen uh, what they call a sneakerhead or someone who uh, likes to uh, buy and collect shoes and sneakers, it's a very big market, especially for Nikes. And if these end up being the first ones in a long iteration of other ones that are going to be released as well, in the future, these could be worth a lot of money. Not financial advice, it's more of a, you know, just general logic. If people are going for the physical ones, if people are going to be hanging out in the metaverse, well, the metaverse sneakers as the first ones are probably going to be some of the largest. Yeah. That's the Nike and Artifact news. And let's move on. Also in the news, 
Retail giant MediaMarkt is ready to install Bitcoin ATMs in 12 of their branches in Austria. The German multinational chain of stores selling electronics, MediaMarkt, sorry, will reportedly install Bitcoin ATMs in 12 branches across Austria. Customers will be able to purchase the leading cryptocurrency at Courant. Okay. Vending machines. A few years ago, MediaMarkt started exploring whether and how to install Bitcoin ATMs in one of its stores in Vienna. Fast forward to nowadays. Is that how you say that? <laughs> Fast forward to today. It has reportedly <laughs> decided to do so in 12 of its branches across Austria. To buy Bitcoin, local clients will use current video machines, vending machines. It is a spinoff of Coinfinity and currently operates 200 Bitcoin ATMs in numerous European nations, including Austria, Germany, Espana, and Greece. According to Stefan Grill, current managing director, installing such machines in the retail business could attract more newcomers to the cryptocurrency ecosystem. For those of you who weren't here, this was years ago, years, 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 years ago. Uh, Europe had a very difficult time with Bitcoin ATMs. This was like 2015, 2016. I remember, I think I was in Paris and this was, a, this was before even you could buy like a little card that had like Bitcoin on or whatever it was. You would find some some Bitcoin ATMs sometimes around Europe, uh, but they they all got kind of taken away. And the idea is the, the European government was like, this is being used for money laundering, and they completely lost their minds, and a lot of them disappeared. So I, I assume it took a very long time and a huge amount of paperwork to be able to do this. I don't know how a lot of Bitcoin ATMs actually operate in other parts of the world. I've seen a lot of them where you, you can walk up to them, you put your money in, you show your QR code and you kind of walk away and you have the crypto. Uh, but I think a lot of them also, uh, what do you call it? Like require you to like scan your ID or like scan your face and all this other stuff. And it's like, no, thank you. I'd, <laughs> I'd rather not. So I have no idea what these kinds of machines are going to be. If you happen to be in Austria and are going to MediaMarkt and you see one of these ATMs, let people know exactly what it is. Because I'm sure a lot of people would like to use, I, I think this ease of use of being able to purchase crypto is, is, a, is, is just a lovely thing to be able to do. But not many people want to, uh, you know, gotta scan your iris to be, to be able to buy any Bitcoin. But I mean, this is adoption. Being able to walk into a store and buy some Bitcoin or any store is a huge step forward. Yeah. That's the 12 new Austrian Bitcoin ATM newses. And yeah, let's move on. Also in surprising news, it's not really surprising, Skybridge Capital, a $3.5 billion asset management firm, is allegedly extremely bullish on the crypto sector. This was said by an executive of the firm. They said, for us, we think... The cryptocurrency market represents tremendous growth. Two executives of Skybridge Capital, Anthony Scaramucci and John Darcy, talked about the firm's crypto outlook in an interview with Bloomberg ahead of SALT, a global thought leadership forum this week. Scaramucci explained that almost half of Skybridge's assets under management are linked to crypto assets, including Bitcoin, the Algorand protocol. I haven't heard, wow, I haven't heard the word Algorand in a while. Ethereum and publicly traded crypto related stocks, noting that his firm expects the crypto focus to triple in assets under management from $3.5 billion to $10 billion. He said, we feel so strongly about this opportunity that we've adopted and repositioned the firm to eventually be a leading cryptocurrency asset manager and advisor. I assume, assumption, this is coming off the backs of a lot of the Terra Luna news. Uh, when Terra Luna announced we are going to be accumulating $10 billion worth of Bitcoin, a week and a half later, the people from Tron decided to copy as well, also saying that they were going to be accumulating $10 billion worth of, of, of crypto for the backing of their whatever it is. And also now I assume, once again, the, the $10 billion is not an, an accident. Accident. Wow, not a word. Accident. Um, I assume it has to do with this like grand number that everyone is trying to rapidly accumulate for some reason, $10 billion worth of crypto. He said, for us, we think the cryptocurrency market represents tremendous growth. Darcy, director of business development at Skybridge Capital, commented, we obviously are extremely bullish on the sector. What? I would have never guessed that. That's completely insane. 
the accumulation continues um, every single day. Uh, you know where I'm going with this, but I'm not going to say it. It's nice to see that accumulation is still happening. I will throw in there. I wish that more people around the world who could potentially benefit from accumulating cryptocurrencies were accumulating crypto so that in the future they could potentially become rich as opposed to just tons of rich people buying up the entire supply. But adoption is adoption. And I know a lot of you are still accumulating as well. So, you know, and, and we're still early. Like, I mean, if you if you really look back at where we currently are right now, uh, we're still very, very early in this space. So that's the billionaires buying more crypto, bullish digital bull walking up a graph news. I don't know. All righty, let's move on. Also in the news, fintech giant Stripe recently teamed up with Twitter to introduce crypto payments to the social network's creator community, USD Coin, which is a stable coin tied to the US dollar. What? Which will be the only protocol or crypto option available for now. Twitter had Twitter, geez. Twitter had previously introduced monetization features like Superfollow, a pay and every I've never heard of Superfollow, a pay ticket system for space events and tips. What? What what is that what does that e- what does that even mean? A selected <laughs> so I've never heard of it. A selected number of creators on Twitter will be able to access the new system during its initial testing phase. Payments will take place on the Polygon network which is tied to Ethereum. Following the partnerships, users will be able to integrate Stripe Connect into their wallets and shops. And once the funds have been received, we'll be able to choose whether to store the money on Polygon or exchange it for another cryptocurrency. Okay. The Web3 hype of 2021 made Stripe change their outlook on cryptocurrencies in general and the rising need for a decentralized blockchain version of the internet prompted the community or the company to form a Web3 dedicated team in order to provide crypto solutions for their customers. Uh, Yeah, there we go. That this was one of the companies who announced that they were adopting and then no longer adopting uh, Bitcoin on their platform years ago. They stated that one of the main reasons was uh, people weren't using it or there wasn't a lot of usage on it. They were talking about the transaction fees. Uh, I always assume it's because no one... W- the vast majority, I'm going to say 99% of people in the crypto space are not really selling their coins. People may trade their coins to try and make a profit. A lot of people are holding or just continuously buying, or if they are selling their coins or getting rid of them, it's usually for their local currency. A lot of people, these companies bombarded the cryptocurrency space a couple of years ago, just assuming because of their names and the hype of the cryptocurrency market that they ignored for so many years that we were supposed to simply throw our money at them like I told you what happened before. We even had news <laughs> when uh, when Tesla started um, accepting Bitcoin for, for cars. And then Elon Musk said, no, we're not going to accept it anymore because Bitcoin's not green. But we found out that no Teslas were actually sold for Bitcoin. I assume he was just embarrassed. No one really wants to get rid of their Bitcoin if... We are talking about very high numbers in the future. It would be, the, the, the entire thing is, never forget this, whenever any company announces Bitcoin as a payment option for a way to you to spend their money at their store, location, whatever it is, they're trying to accumulate your Bitcoin. They know that Bitcoin is extremely finite. And in the background, they're trying to accumulate as much as they possibly can. The idea is... We can get even more Bitcoin if we tell these people whatever products they're looking to buy, they can also buy it through us, which then in the future allows a lot of the earlier adopters who had Bitcoin to have even fewer Bitcoin because the corporations, which already have billions of dollars, are accumulating everyone else's coins who decide to buy through them. That's how it works. I told you before, when you hear all these companies talking about an ease of payments for the system or to help their customers have a better time and a better experience, they don't care about you. Money is always the bottom line. They're trying to, not only are they trying to get your US dollars, they realize, what is it, by the year 2030, 
29, I think that's the year, it will take 100, that is 100 years to mine the last 1% one, 1 of Bitcoin. 100 years. This is when everyone's expecting Bitcoin's price to be near a million dollars at that point. Guess who gets richer? The companies, because they've convinced you to keep giving up your Bitcoin to them over and over and over. And then you sit there going, oh man, I remember I had a fourth of a Bitcoin. That was, wow, can you imagine if I had that now? You look at your wallet and you have so few because you've, you've given it away. That's why all the companies are rushing into this space. It's not because... <laughs> They care about you or want you to be, uh, you know, more comfortable. Why do you think all the banks are rapidly getting into the space? Why do you think I have so much confusion every single day when all these companies are getting into it and all these hedge funds are buying up all the Bitcoin and offering it only to their wealthiest clients? Because everybody else is not supposed to be a part of this new system. They've already decided that. Anyway, that's the Stripe is apparently going to be rolling out uh, stable coin payments on Twitter. Let's see how that goes. I don't assume that Muskie will uh, have too much of a problem with this. I, I, I feel like, listen, there's been so many promises on Twitter. By the end of this year, we and I think... Don't we already have Bitcoin payments on Twitter? Like even Lightning Network payments? I feel like that was the last thing that Dorsey did before he left. By the end of this year, we should have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Stablecoin payments, all of that stuff linked directly into Twitter. I'm just throwing it out there because, you know, there's so much discussion about all these things and, you know, musky and all that. Yeah, I do hope that you've all enjoyed I do hope that you all are having, hopefully, a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are. Oh, there's usually only one Bitcoin bus. Look at that. Look at look at Bitcoin having multiple buses. Yeah, look at that. Great day, great morning, great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting. And or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.